If you ever had to make a similar cut on a long or a wide board on your table saw using the standard fence that comes with your saw, then for sure you've stopped and thought how safe is this cut? And the answer to this question is no, it is not safe at all. But you can build a jig to help you make this cut safely and accurately. In this episode, I will show you how to make one. Let's begin with cutting two boards to the desired length and width. I will make it long enough to cover most of my fence length and 10 inches high for one fence and 8 inches on the other. Then I will measure the width of the fence on the front, rear and bottom side to ensure they read the same or approximately the same. Then I will start cutting my dado grooves in the inside of the boards making sure that the width of the dado is the same as the plywood thickness I'm using to have a tight fit and wobbling free joint. Once all dados are cut, it's time to make the last one for the T-Track. It is time to cut the plywood pieces which will join the fence boards together. This of course requires a precise measurement if you are planning to have your standard fence to fit tight inside the auxiliary fence we are building. And to make this measurement accurate, you need to add the depth of one of the dados we have cut multiplied by two to the width of the standard fence. If all done right, you will have a nice tight fit between the two fences. As you might notice here, my phenolic plywood is not very flat. This is not a problem for now, as I will be clamping them to a flat surface when I start assembling the fence. I've added an additional piece of plywood to the back of the fence face to ensure the T-Track screws have enough material to hold the T-Track securely. I will use glue only for this assembly and it should be enough for the setup and I don't think driving screws to the side of the plywood will add significant strength to the fence. Here I'm checking the flatness of the fence and it seems okay. Seems a tight fit we have here. Not too tight to flex the fence outward and not too loose to make it wobble or move. Now it's time to adjust the fence squareness in relevance with the table saw. I'm sure that most of the cabinet saws standard fences come with these knobs to tilt the fence up and down to allow for a 90 degree adjustment. You can trim any excess material on the front and the back of the fence if you wish. I would consider this as a cosmetic addition, not a functional one. Now let's test the new fence. I will add the sacrificial board for making rabbit cuts and will use a strip of wood to rise the board by one eighth of an inch to allow for the sawdust to escape and avoid it building up between the fence and the cutting piece. You can also use a dado blade to make wider rabbits if you have one or use a normal blade and make repeatable passes as desired. It is now easy and safe to make this cut for wider and longer boards on the table so as your work will be fully supported by the fence. You can make rabbit cuts, beveled cuts and even a raised panel doors with this fence.
It is also very easy to make a tenon cuts using this fence just by adding the simple jig. You can use a piece of the same plywood sandwich between two scrap pieces like so and hold them together with screws. Once this sacrificial push jig is assembled, spread some wax on its path on the fence for smoother sliding. This push jig will act as a support to the workpiece you are cutting and as a sacrificial piece to prevent tearing out the back of the workpiece at the end of the cut. The space above and inside the fence can be used as a storage compartment. To store push sticks, allen keys or any other items, you need them nearby your table saw. Finally, there are many auxiliary fence designs out there. You can choose which one works best for you and build it for yourself. Then you will discover how handy it can be. Thank you for watching and many thanks for your subscription to the channel. Take care and happy woodworking.